Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve two-step inequalities. We will go through four examples in order to get this down. Now, when we solve two-step inequalities, we want to isolate the variable, get it by itself on one side of the inequality. We do that by using inverse operations. So this is very similar to solving two-step equations. If you can solve an equation, you can solve an inequality. One thing that we need to be aware of though, when it comes to inequalities, remember, we flip the inequality symbol when multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative. Let's jump into number one, where we have 7x minus three is greater than 18. Now here, just like with a two-step equation, we want to undo the subtraction first. We go in the reverse order of operations to undo the operations and isolate the variable. So we need to undo the subtraction first and then the multiplication here. The inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So add three to the left side of the inequality. Whatever we do to one side, of an inequality we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced. So add three to the right side as well. Now, as far as the left side, these threes cancel each other out. So we have seven X is greater than, and then on the right side, 18 plus three gives us 21. So now we have seven X is greater than 21. Seven times X is greater than 21. So now we need to undo that multiplication using the inverse operation. That's division. So let's divide the left side by seven. That means we need to divide the right side by seven as well. Now on the left side, these sevens cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So we have X, is greater than, and then on the right side, 21 divided by seven gives us three. So we get X is greater than three, and that's our answer. So X can be any value greater than three. And lastly, let's check a value that's greater than three to make sure it works and we are correct. Let's use five. So seven times plug in five for X minus three is greater than 18. Seven times five gives us 35, and then 35 minus three gives us 32. 32 is greater than 18, so that does work. We are correct here. Again, our answer, X is greater than three. Let's move on to number two. Taking a look at number two, we have y divided by negative two plus five is greater than or equal to nine. Now here, just like we talked about in number one, we go in the reverse order of operations to undo the operations and isolate the variable. So we need to undo the addition first and then the division here. The inverse operation of addition is subtraction. So let's subtract five from the left side of the inequality. Whatever we do to one side of an inequality, we must do to the other in order to keep it balanced. So subtract five from the right side as well. Now on the left side, these fives cancel each other out. So we have y divided by negative two, is greater than or equal to, and then on the right, nine minus five gives us four. So now we have y divided by negative two is greater than or equal to four. Now, since y is being divided by negative two, we need to undo that division using the inverse operation. That's multiplication. So let's multiply the left side by negative two. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So multiply the right side by negative two as well. Now remember, when we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, the inequality symbol flips. 
it changes direction. So on the left, these negative twos cancel each other out. Y is now isolated. The inequality symbol flips. And then on the right, four times negative two gives us negative eight. So Y is less than or equal to negative eight. So Y can be any value less than or equal to negative eight. Now, as far as that inequality symbol flipping, basically, as soon as we multiplied both sides by a negative, negative two for this example, that inequality symbol flips in order to keep the inequality true. Lastly, let's check this by plugging in a value that is less than or equal to negative eight for y and seeing if it works. So we can see if we are correct here. Let's use negative 10. That's less than negative eight. And since we are dividing by negative two, that will work nicely there. Then we have plus five is greater than or equal to nine. Negative 10 divided by negative two gives us five. And then five plus five gives us 10. 10 is greater than or equal to nine. So that does work. We are correct here. Y is less than or equal to negative eight. And then since Y can be equal to negative eight, let's try that as well. And we will do this mentally. So we have negative eight divided by negative two plus five. Negative eight divided by negative two gives us four. Four plus five gives us nine. And nine is greater than or equal to nine. So that works as well. Let's move on to number three. Now let's take a look at number three where we have negative four n plus six is greater than or equal to negative 14. So we need to undo the addition first here. We use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. So subtract six from the left side. That means we need to subtract six from the right side as well. Now these sixes cancel each other out. So we have negative 4n is greater than or equal to, and then negative 14 minus six gives us negative 20. So now we have negative 4n is greater than or equal to negative 20. So now we need to undo that multiplication. The inverse operation is division. So divide the left side by negative four. That means we need to divide the right side by negative four as well. Now you'll notice that we're dividing both sides by a negative, so that inequality symbol flips. Now on the left, these negative fours cancel each other out, so n is now isolated, then the inequality symbol flips, and then negative 20 divided by negative four gives us five, positive five. So n is less than or equal to five. And that's our answer. So n can be any value less than or equal to five. Now let's check this by plugging in a value less than five for n and seeing if it works. Let's use two. So we have negative four times two, plug in two for n plus six is greater than or equal to negative 14. Negative four times two gives us negative eight and negative eight plus six gives us negative two. Negative two is greater than or equal to negative 14. So we are correct here. N is less than or equal to five. And let's actually check five as well since n can be equal to five and we will do this mentally. So we have negative four times five, that gives us negative 20 plus six gives us negative 14. And negative 14 is greater than or equal to negative 14. So that works as well. Let's move on to number four. Lastly, let's take a look at number four. We have three is greater than 
m divided by 9 minus 8. So let's undo that subtraction first by using the inverse operation, addition. So let's add 8 to the right side, and then we need to add 8 to the left side. Now on the right side, these cancel each other out. So we have m divided by 9 is less than, and then on the left side, 3 plus 8 gives us 11. So we have m divided by 9 is less than 11. So we need to undo that division. The inverse operation is multiplication. So multiply the right side by 9. That means we need to multiply the left side by 9 as well. These 9s cancel each other out. m is now isolated. So m is less than, and then on the left, 11 times 9 gives us 99. So m is less than 99. And remember, we can always rewrite an inequality with the variable coming first. It can make an inequality easier to work with. And all we need to do is write the variable first and then make sure the inequality symbol is going the correct way. So it needs to open up towards 99 here. M needs to remain less than 99. So M is less than 99. Either way works there, but keep in mind you can rewrite it with the variable coming first. Now let's plug in a value for m that is less than 99 to see if it works. Let's use 90. Since we are dividing, that will work nicely with that 9. And 90 is less than 99. So 90 divided by 9 minus 8. 90 divided by 9 gives us 10. 10 minus 8 gives us 2. And 3 is greater than 2. So that does work out. We are correct here. Again, our final answer, m is less than 99. So m can be any value less than 99. So there you have it. There's how to solve two-step inequalities. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.